the last week I built this PWM generator, which basically is a CD4106 oscillator that's making a sawtooth wave. Then that's buffered, and then it makes a, um, it centers the sawtooth wave around the ground, and then it uses a comparator to make a pulse wave, and uh, then the output signal is buffered, and it goes to the PWM signal, and that uh, the reference voltage for the comparator um, can be either handled manually or with a control voltage input to change the reference voltage, and that changes the PWM duty cycle. So now I took that circuit, which is here, and I put it to the gate of a MOSFET. That's the PWM output going to the gate of a MOSFET. And so now we'll see how well that works. So when I left off um, with this uh, diagram of how the PWM generator, basically um, the output of this, which is the PWM signal here, um, can't directly go to a motor. Um, if you put it directly to a motor, the maximum that these chips can supply in terms of current is only 25 milliamps. And so that is not going to do anything um, to make a motor really spin, especially a higher voltage motor. So you need a power source here that's um, a little more, that can supply current and so in order to do this, I basically um, used a MOSFET. So MOSFET is kind of similar to a transistor. Um, it's a little bit different. This is an N-channel -ch MOSFET. Um, if you look at a transistor, a transistor has a collector, a base, and uh, an emitter. And the MOSFET has similar things, but instead it's a, it has a gate, a drain, and a source. So the drain could be uh, viewed as the collector. The source can be viewed as the emitter. It usually gets connected to some ground or the output. Drain is the input. And the gate is the switch signal that turns it on and off. And this is, unlike a transistor, this is um, triggered by voltage and not current. And uh, it has a few little other caveats. You know, the typical, the symbol for a gate, uh, for a MOSFET looks kind of like this. Um, and where the gate goes in, the two ends are not actually, the two things are not actually touching. Um, and so it's a field effect transistor. MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. So that's how it works. So I have this little experiment set up to demonstrate um, how a MOSFET works. I have a nine volt battery supplying power um, through this little wire here, this top wire, um, which goes to the middle pin, this pin two, which is the, um, which is the drain. Um, the output is uh, an LED bulb. The source is going to, through this resistor, um, it's a current limiting resistor so the LED doesn't blow and the LED bulb is going, the other end of it is going to ground. And then this is the gate. And so um, this is how the gate functions as a switch. If I touch this wire with the gate, um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so people can see. If I touch this wire with the gate, it should turn on the LED bulb. And there it is, it does. But the minute I stop touching the wire to the positive, it stays on. And it's because it's uh, capacitatively charged. And so it won't turn off again until I touch it to the ground, which is this wire here. So if I touch it to ground again, boom. And so um, in this way, if I turn it on, it works. Touch it to ground, on, ground. And so this little experiment, now here's another little uh, thing. So if I touch 
the positive with my finger on my hand and then I touch the wire, it turns on. And then I turn it to ground and it slowly goes off. And that's the reason why is because my body is a giant resistor. So if I press this to power again and then just touch it with my finger, boom, goes on, triggers the effect. Um, and they off, on, off, on, off, on, off. So you could do some creative stuff with that. But in order to prevent this, um, you need at the gate, at the gate source, um, or at the gate, you need some a pull down resistor. I have a 4.7K resistor here um, that I put to ground. And now when I touch the wire, it goes on as long as I'm holding it there. The minute I take it off, this is a pull down resistor. So you need a pull down resistor at the gate to make this happen. And so when um, I make the circuit happen here um, with the MOSFET, I have here the MOSFET and I need a pull down resistor. Uh, it could be anything 4.7K uh, to ground. And then what you do is when you take this PWM signal, the PWM output, you connect it there to the gate of the MOSFET. And the MOSFET, um, the drain of the MOSFET gets attached to 12 volts the uh, source of the MOSFET is the output. This I'm using as a diode from ground to positive as a flyback diode to prevent any uh, problems with the in, you know, induction by the motor. Um, and then here's the H bridge that I talked about two videos ago. Um, and this H bridge functions at, to change the direction of the motor based on switches. If you close this switch and this switch at the same time, the motor spins in one way. If you close this switch and this switch at the same time, the motor closes in this way. You can't close this and this switch at the same time because that's just a short circuit and you're gonna blow up your uh, MOSFET. Um, so you just wire these two together, um, switch. If this, is, if I'm gonna number them, one, two, three, four, switch one and three, or switch two and four, it should be on at the same time. So that is the essence of driving a motor with the PWM generator that we built in the previous video. The MOSFET is voltage, once again, a voltage controlled device that acts as a switch and it's a very fast switch so if you have this frequency of this pwm signal really high it will respond very very quickly um especially like the the current mosfets the the mosfet i used is an irfz 44n which is kind of a popular general purpose mosfet uh so there are a bunch of them that are fairly popular but um the, a voltage applied to the gate here as can be shown on our uh, experiment, um, will trigger a large, uh, will trigger this circuit to go on. Um, and the MOSFET, particularly this one, can have um, an amp, can give out up to, this one can give up, uh, up to 50, um, 55 volts and like a you know i don't remember the exact number but some of them can go up to like 50 amps um of current draw so whatever your motor draws it will gladly provide as long as your power source is able to provide it so uh your power supply um and the mosfet will handle it and the more load it handles the hotter it gets so sometimes um you need a heat sink on them that's why they have the little that's why they have the little uh screw here for the heat sink but uh and there you can see it there but uh that's how that works on off on off see and if i take away the pull down resistor on done 
and then it won't turn off until you connect it to ground, connect the gate to ground. So does it, if it's uh, on and floating, um, it won't go off unless I hold it and touch the ground. And then that uses my um, conduction through my uh, entire body, which is just a giant resistor. Now let's put everything together and put the PWM generator to power a motor through a MOSFET. Here's the PWM circuit functioning automatically according to my little uh, low frequency oscillator, LFO. And the output of the PWM generator is going through this MOSFET right there and with the flyback diode and that's powering this motor. going off and on, increasing speed and decreasing speed. Um, all with the help of a little control voltage. Imagine what we could do with that. Here's the same thing with a fixed duty cycle that I control manually with this potentiometer right here. And I have it set to a duty cycle of about 2080 and 500 hertz and there it is spinning slowly which is appropriate for a cassette deck type speed so I didn't measure the formal RPMs but um, this can be controlled manually or with a control voltage that could be switched between the two so I'd say that's working just fine for motor control. And that's uh, using MOSFET here to, uh, with a flyback diode and uh, resistor to ground so it's not always on. And um, there it is. Now I just have to make an appropriate transmission for this thing. So here's the motor being acted upon by a PWM signal with control voltage that's cycling off and on. So this is the completed circuit on the breadboard with uh, the H bridge going from the MOSFET to control the direction of the motor spin. There's one direction. Here's the other direction. And the PWM signal I have oscillating with the control voltage that's cycled or that's connected to an LFO. So now let's put it all together on a PCB and have it working for a tape motor project that I'm doing. Thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next.